good evening folks and welcome to a kit review and as you probably can already see this is something that I normally would not do a review on because this is not a German tank to the contrary this is Ryfield models M4 A3 Easy 8 E8 Sherman the US medium tank kit number is 5028 I am absolutely no expert on the Sherman, so going forward you should not expect me to give you perfect in-depth looks at production details about the Sherman. I saw this kit assembled and I had to have one. It just looked stunning. The engineering, the parts, everything just looked great to me when I saw this assembled. So I bought this last year, shortly after the kit came out. I love the box art. I think this vehicle, this particular vehicle, as is depicted on the box art, was actually used in the Ardennes. It might have also been used in, in France, but don't, like, don't put that down. I'm not entirely sure. I will show you once we look at the instructions exactly where this was used. I really do like the look of the the M4A3 because it's so it's bulky and and those shapes here with this welded on armor plate here just looks nice to me and I really like the suspension system on this EZ8 one and the white tracks so I really like this and and especially the fact that they have gotten rid of these early Sherman fenders that totally annoyed me when I had to build them on an earlier Shermans that I built. So basically that's all about the box art. Let me show you guys what we find on the sides. As you can see they ha it has workable tracks and I'm really looking forward to, or actually I'm, I'm really excited to work with these because it looks as if they are easy to build, but I want to see myself. Some interior hatch detail here. I really like the fact that this is a molded piece, not one of these um, soft plastic parts. And here we can see the marking options that we can already see on the box art. So apparently, at least when you look outside and only reference the box, you would think that you get only one marking option. But once we look inside, I'll show you that I think there's two or three in there. So once we open this box in a second. I can show you there's more to this than just one marking option. So without further ado, let me put all of the unnecessary things aside and we'll look at the plastic right away. Okay guys, I lied. I said we would start with the sprues, but before we can look at the sprues, let's like take a look at the instruction sheet and at the painting and marking guide. And let's start with the painting and marking guide. This once again is of the option we get on the box art 68th tank battalion Germany 1945 so no art dance for this and then as I said there's a second one here on the back this is 12th armored division Germany 1945 so no art dance but they would have had to travel through some part of either Belgium or France to get to Germany so no matter what I just have to look up where these divisions were to see if this actually is viable for the Ardennes. I have no clue and no idea about the tank's history. If you want to look up the tank's history, go and look up videos on the M4A3. Maybe there, I, I think there even is one by, for example, um, Nicholas Morin. With his inside of the hatch, so you can, you can go see if one of these is, is for you and then like I said the instruction sheets this is my first ever Ryfield model kit so 
I will have to get used to the way they make their instructions. And as you can see, we have a big and very well visible sprue map here. And then some colors. The one weird thing with these instructions is we start with the turret. Normally when you build an armor model, you always start with the running gear. This one reverses this completely and just starts us out with the turret. Some basic turret interior. Putting the gun mount together. The machine gun... Uh, no, I, yes, I think this is the machine gun holding bracket here. No, it's not. See, this is just the bracket that holds the the hatch in place when you open it or close it. We have the 30 cal here, or no, I think it's a 50 cal. It tells you to drill out some holes. Putting defenders on, which I think are, no, they are plastic, they're not PE, but we will look at the parts in a second. We again can leave the engine bay open, but I don't think there's an engine in there, so I think that will be a waste. We're going through this instruction rather quickly because I have no clue what I'm showing you here. All I see is we are putting stuff together and the results look like a proper Sherman to me. And and like I said, this is really weird for me. The bogeys and the running gear is the last thing that you do. Look at this. And then here is the assembly of the tracks. And let me zoom into this so you guys can actually see how we put these together. There's a jig that you put the track links on, still on the sprue, then you cut that off, and then you put like three pieces onto every track before you then put on the track pad. So this is gonna be gonna be tough. And then you put this on top, press it down so this way they kind of click in place, I guess. But yes, this is gonna this is gonna take some time, I think, for me to build these. So it's it, it's not your typical evening project this. And you put on the tracks, put on the towing cable, and then we're almost good to go. Have to put together the muzzle, put it on the gun barrel, and we are good to go. Put the turret on the rest and then build some ammo boxes here for the 30 cal and for the 50 cal. So I wasn't wrong there when I said 30 cal or 50 cal because look what we got here. We've got a 30 and a 50 cal. How about that? I like that. Okay, so now that we've looked at the instruction and the painting and marking guide, let me now take you to the plastic. Alright guys, here's how we're going to do this. We are first going to look at the hull and the turret, and then we're going through the sprues in alphabetical order. And as you can see, here we have the, the hull tub, and you can probably see the beautiful rolled steel texture here. I really like the structural detail. The molding is very crisp, very nice and clean. The details look very very good to my eye. And like I said, the, the orange peely roll steel texture is very very nice. There are no sinkholes or ejector pin marks on the outside, which was to be expected. They're all inside here. You can see them back there. But outside, everything's perfectly fine. Like I said, next up is the turret. And again, we have very, very nice rolled steel texture. Look at this. This is, this is beautiful. Ah, oh, great. Serial number, as with all Sherman turrets, serial number on top. And again, sink marks and ejector pin marks are on the inside, so this should not be a problem when you put this together. You will not have to fill a lot on the outside, if at all. I quickly show you the PE fret here. As you can see, it's not the biggest, but we have the brush guards for the headlights. Some, I think, tool clamps up there. Yeah, those are tool clamps. And I think... I think this is for the hatch on the turret, and what that is, I have no... Oh yeah, this is an air intake cover. And on the other side we have the decals. Not that many decals, we have the 23s and the stars and the... The tortoise here. Huh? 
for the turtle. And then some some numerals and a paper doll, I guess. A paper doll is the name of one of the tanks. We have a clear sprue with the periscopes. The parts look very, well, a bit milky, but not a lot. You can actually see through them enough for them to be clear. And again, the area of the periscope that we leave clear is so small. I don't get why they need to make them in clear. And then, and that's one of the, the big letdowns for me, we have some polycaps. The polycaps are not the issue, but this is a, th a thread here. This is not like a metal tow cable, it's just a thread that we use for the cable. So I will be replacing this for sure, I can already tell you. Like I said, let's go through the spruce in alphabetical order. Let me zoom out just a bit. This is the A sprue, and the A sprue is in this kit twice. Because this contains the sprockets, the idler wheel, and our rope wheels. And while I zoom in here, you can see the lovely detail here. The wing nuts. No, it's not wing nuts. But the bolts. And actually some, some writing there on the tires. And we have parts for the bogies. Look very good. Let me zoom in here on the sprockets. And again, we can see the nice bolt detail there. And this is the bow machine gun here. And once again, this is slight molded. Very, very nice. I just built the Dustwerk Panther, and their machine guns are not slight molded. So, uh, Tacom doesn't slight mold, whereas Ryfield does. So, yes, this is the H brew, like I said, twice in this kit. I only show you one now, because why would I show you repetitive sprues? Next up is the B sprue. The B sprue contains some miscellaneous parts like jerry cans, the tripod for our 50 cal, our 50 cal here, some handguns, those are MP5s I think. This is a 30 cal, actually two barrels for a 30 cal, all slight molded as you can see here. Nicely slight molded guns, there you go. Some ammunition boxes and some tools, some Pioneer tools. That's basically all we get on the B sprue. This is in there only once. Let's continue. The C sprue, also only in there once. The turd ring and the lower half of our turd. A very nice a very very nice cupola. Let me show you the detail on the cupola. Look at this. The texture is is really really nice. I really like this texture. And we also get this texture down here as well. A one piece gun barrel. Yeah, yes, one piece gun barrel. Very very nice. Some interior detailing here on the gun breech. A one piece muzzle brake. Well, at least the brake, the muzzle brake itself is one piece, then you only have to like put in the um, the ring inside and then put the lid on top there basically. But it's not like you have to like marry two parts to complete it. So this is some, some, some turret detailing, hatch, gun man lid, and stuff like that. This is, like I said, only in there once, because why would you need two for a one turreted vehicle? Same goes for this sprue. Here we have the canvas cover for the gun bridge, uh, the gun mantlet, and look at this. I really, look at the nice, like, the folding, and, and I really like this, and it's a four-piece thing. So, yeah, I really, I really like this. This looks like parts for the back of the vehicle. Air intakes, like we, yeah, this is the back plate, and again, beautiful texture. And look at this, look at this gun mantle. Look at, look at the texture. This, this is. I don't know if I've seen texture this great. Listen to this. I don't know if I've seen texture this great, and apparently. This was designed for something else, because there's supposed to be something here, typically, I would say. And the rest are just 
spare tracks and, and miscellaneous parts. Next up is the e-sprue. And what we haven't talked about yet is the lower hull. Here it is, the hull tub. It's a multi-piece assembly. I'm not a big fan of multi-piece assembled hull tubs, but I guess it is the way they do it nowadays. So nice detail on the underside here, not too much. Again, nice cast detail there, nice texture. And the fenders, one piece fenders. So it's going to be tough to like maybe have parts missing, but overall, very nice E sprue. Only in there once. And now the last sprue, which is in there four times. And let me pre prefix this. I, I said earlier that I'm looking forward to building the tracks. I take that back. And I take that back rather quickly. Um, the tracks. This is the jig. Let me turn it this way. You can see the pattern. And this looks <laughs> daunting. And like I said, this sprue is in there four times. You can tell that this is going to take a long time to finish the two track runs. But if you want to do it properly and if you want to have workable tracks, you just need to take your time. But yes, this is the track sprue. It's in there four times. There's not much detail there, but you can see here the nice pattern. Yeah, lots and lots of cleanup and lots and lots of smaller parts. Four times. So, yes, let me put the sprues away, bring back the box for my final verdict. So, as the church bells ring in the background, here is the final verdict on the Ryfield M483E8 EZ8 Sherman kit number 5028. From what I can tell, and I'm not, sure, not a Sherman expert, as I said, the kit itself looks really, really good to me. The surface detail is beyond anything I've seen so far when it comes to just molding surface detail on a 35th scale kit. The cast texture, the rolled steel texture is just, it's just phenomenal, I gotta say. So the plastic quality is, is out of this world. So for the plastic quality alone, this is a 10 out of 10. The instructions look a bit daunting to me and the tracks also look a bit daunting, but if they do work as shown on the box and as seen in so many other people's builds, they're well worth it. And you get a lot for your money. This is not an expensive kit. I think I paid 45 euros, 50 euros roughly for this compared to dragon kits. This is a bargain. So. I highly recommend you guys this kit if you're looking for a late war American Sherman Western Front 45. This looks great to me. So it's a 9.5 out of 10. Oh, it's a 10 out of 10. Why bother? It's a 10 out of 10. The only thing why I would deduct points is maybe the fact that you only get two marking options. Could have been a third or a fourth, but that's like nitpicking at this point. So this is a 10 out of a 10. I'm saying this now. I haven't built this yet. So if I come back after I've built this and I'll do an addendum to this video and I'll tell you this built like, I don't know, like a whore, you'll get to know. But at this stage where we are right now, just looking at the sprues, just looking at the kit, 10 out of 10, no questions asked. Thank you guys for watching. I hope I'll see you guys soon. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay home. May the force be with you. Bye, guys.